Okay, so we left it last on the comments. And um, the next thing that I want to talk about is um, some other basic stuff. Um, like, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about arithmetic operators. And um, what is an arithmetic operator? Basically, um, the word arithmetic tells us that it's related to math. And, um, and we know that, you know, a, a lot of these things would be like even silly to explain what is, what is an addition, what is a subtraction, what is a, a multiplication, what is a division, all those things, no. Anybody with some basic understanding of math understands that. The ones that, uh, after the division, there are some that I want to make sure that we understand. Oh, by the way, multiplication, uh, typically when we are writing it on or at the very least, when we're taught multiplication, we do like three times four, and then, you know, that's 12. But we write it with an X. In the case of, uh, of, uh, of Java, that um, would lead to some confusion because it might mean, you know, a variable named X. So uh, they decided to use the star instead of an, instead of an X. Um, so we're we're using a different symbol for for the multiplication. That's something you know, just very simple. Um, the next thing is all those other oper uh, operands. We have the, the modulo. Um, what does this one mean? We have um, a division. Um, let's say. Uh, 5 divided by 2 and then when we do our division uh, that's basically what we do, would do it manually so this guy would be the result of 5 divided by 2 equals 2 this guy would be the result of 5 modulo 2 equals 1 so Basically, we know that then the, this is a modulo operand and this is the result of the division of 5 divided by 2 and 5 modulo 2 is this guy down here. So, um, why or when is it a good use of, uh, of this thing? Well, let's assume that um, we want to limit some numbers. Um, say that we want a number between 0 and 5. And um, the easiest, if we want any number to be between 0 and 5, let's assume, all we have to do is to have that number modulo 5. And that's going to give me a number between 0 and 5, depending on what n is. So even if it's, um, um, I don't know, whatever, like 3 modulo 5, we would be translating it. So it would be 3, and then it would be 1, and then 2. So 2 would be a number that goes between 0 and 5. It's a, it's a nifty little trick of... Um, of when we, of how we get numbers like that. And you know, n could be even a random number, but it's it's a little trick for, um, you know, giving, giving you a number between two numbers. Great. Um, so that's that uh, operand. Um, then plus plus, we kind of briefly mentioned it last time. Plus plus means plus one. So if you have a, a, a variable, let's say x, and we do x plus plus, what that this thing is going to do is that it's going to increment the value by one. So it's, if x was 10, by the end of this line, x will be 11. Uh, same thing with minus minus, it just, it just means minus one. So if we did x minus minus, by the end of this line, we would go back into 10. Now, there is something where you can do plus plus x or minus or or minus minus x, meaning 
that you are going to interpret the number, you're going to increase the number before it is um, evaluated. So what do I mean for that? Let's go into a very, very, very uh, quick exercise. So let's go into our Hello World class and delete everything inside of that. And I'd like you guys to follow along. So if you can open your IntelliJ, and we're going to do the same thing, int x equals 10. Then the next line, let me move my iPad. Um, then the next line is going to be x plus plus, and we're going to do system dot out. Well, let's do sout s out uh, x. If we did this, we're going to get that 11 behavior. Same thing if we did this backwards, where we're doing plus plus x and run it. We're going to get also 11. You might be wondering, well, then what is the difference between plus plus x and x plus plus because we're getting the same result? Well, what would happen if we did the following? If we did x plus plus like this, we would get 10, even though that the line right after says that it's 11. That means that this, this line evaluated X and printed it before it incremented it. That's why the order says X is evaluated before I am incrementing it. In this thing, this operation comes after the print. Now let's try it backwards. Plus plus X, and we're only changing the order of the operands and the, and the variable. See, it's 11 and 11. That means that the increment happened before X was evaluated. And the increment is even notated as before that X. Okay, so now that we understand the order of those operands, same thing happens for the minus minus. So I don't need to like go and, 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 and do the same thing. Now, um, plus equals is basically the same thing as this one, but this one is only increment of one. This one is an increment of whatever number you're putting after. So for example, I can do x plus equals 10. And then if I run it, I'm going to get 20. Because, and let me add some spaces, because spaces are for free and it helps everybody to understand and read it better. Plus equals 10, that adds that 20. Then, um, same thing with minus equals. We can do minus instead of plus, and we're going to get a, a flat out zero, like this guy. OK? Perfect. So um, then the next thing I want, I would like you guys to, um, if we evaluated this, this code, and we did x equals 10, and then x, actually, let's, let's even copy it. And let's put it in our code. With regards to the operators, uh, there are not, we know now that there are some math operators. Now we need to understand if there's logical operators. And a logical operator is basically when something resolves to uh, true or false. Meaning uh, a comparison, for, for example, if, it, if something is equal, uh, the double equals uh, sign is a comparison for something being equal. When something has that exclamation equal means that it is not equal. Uh, when something is greater than or lesser than, uh, greater or equal than or lesser than or equal than, than a, a number. All those resolve to uh, logical operators or to true or false. You know, is this, is this the same as that? Yes or no. Same thing with uh, if this is different, yes or no. Um, now, the last two are also, they also resolve to true or false, but they're slightly different. 
So one thing I want to explain is, uh, and maybe some of you already know this, and this is probably too basic, and I apologize if this is too basic, uh, but these are truth tables. <clears throat> and some of you might have um, uh, had the chance of, uh, of, of uh, knowing what is a, a truth table. And basically what this thing does is that it tells us if something, um, if zero and zero, let, let's, let's put it this way. Uh, um, in an or fashion means that you either get one or the other. So the question is always going to be, okay, given that you get A or B, are you getting A or B? That's very simple. So for example, uh, let's say that you got um, a, ham a hamburger and fries. Let's say that uh, A is a hamburger, B is fries. If uh, you ordered something else in the menu, uh, so for example, let's say that you got a hot dog and an ice cream. So if you got, did you get a hamburger? No, that's a zero. Did you get fries? No. So did you get a hamburger or fries? No. The nice thing about an OR condition is that you would need to have at the very least one of those conditions to be true for the OR operation to be true. So uh, in the case of, let's say that you got hot dog and fries, did you get a hamburger? No. But did you get fries? Yes. So did you get hamburger or fries? You did get the fries. In the case of say hamburger and ice cream, did you get a hamburger? In this case, we're saying yes. And well, what happens when you don't get the ice cream? The, I mean, the fries, you got an ice cream. Well, because you did get hamburger or ice or fries, this is a one. And so on for the situation where you get both hamburger and fries. Uh, the and is very similar, but that, that only, the condition is only met when you get both. So again, hamburger and fries, in the case where you got a hot dog and ice cream, did you get hamburger and fries? No, you didn't get both. Did you get a hot dog and fries? Did you get, then the question becomes, did you get the hamburger and the fries? And the question is, I mean, the answer is no, because you only got the fries and the hot dog. Same thing for a hamburger and ice cream. Did you get both? Not really, but in the last case, we're saying, yes, I did get the hamburger and yes, I did get the fries. Well, in the, the question is, did you get both? Then it's the same thing. And we're gonna come back to this exercise uh, in a little bit because uh, there's some more important stuff that I wanna tackle, which is the operator priority. Operator priority is just basically in any expression, uh, how is a computer going to understand something? And when we are writing as humans, and, and I'm putting the this in the code down here, uh, typically, we understand things from left to right. So if, if we were going to do this as, as a human, uh, we would do something like 100 plus 2, that would do 102. And then times 10, that would be 1020, right? That's, uh, that's uh, that. So if we did divide it by 4, let's say... 1020 divided by 4 right now my my it's 255 equals 255 and that that is if we chose to to evaluate it from left to right but that is too ambiguous for the computer because you know it's it's not a good way of of doing priorities of evaluation and and assignments so the computer, in order to remove, because the computer tries to do one thing and one thing only, it tries to remove uncertainty. And to remove uncertainty, it has to have a certain set of rules so that things are applied in the same consistent way and things uh, are predictable. So for example, if we want to um, do this 100 plus two, blah, 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 blah. If we, this, is, this is our priority list where the highest priority is either a plus plus or a minus minus, an increment or a decrement. Then is multiplication and then division, then plus, then minus. Then the next tier would be uh, comparisons, then, ampersand, then and operands, 
then OR, and then at the very end, the lowest operation is the assignment. Effectively, making this expression that we try to do it from left to right, the computer would do it in the same, in the way that it's being told here. It's gonna resolve this one here because this is the highest one in this operation here. So it's gonna be 10 uh, times, I mean, two times 10 equals 20. Then that 20 gets passed and then the division is applied, which is this, the second one. So it started with this one, then this one. So once it did that 10 plus, 100 plus two, and became, um, I mean, sorry, this 20, then divided by four equals five. And then it is the sum, which is this guy, would, which would happen 100 plus five. And then at the very, very, very end is this low guy. So again, if we did int x equals um, 100 times two times 10 divided by four, uh, it would give us 105. Now, if we wanted to do it the way that I was saying and force the computer to do it in a, in a way that um, there's no confusion, this is where adding parentheses would help. So we would do this and we would get that 255 because we're saying, okay, first resolve this, then resolve this, and then resolve this. So parentheses help us. And by the way, parentheses are free as well. So if for whatever reason you find that left to right works for you, use parentheses to force the computer to use your terms as opposed to the priority, because the priority here is gonna be this guy, then this guy, then this guy. In this case, we do have multiple parentheses. We have one in, in the other, but if, even if I did like exact same parentheses, it wouldn't change anything because it would try to resolve this, then the outer parentheses, then these outer parentheses. And then whatever value extra is left. Okay, so um, again, parentheses allows us to just guide the computer to where we want it to do. I would like you guys to print one of these guys where you either pass, um, let's do the first one. So as, a, as an example, zero comma zero, and then after I would like you to do zero or zero. Um, this is, again, just to try to get you as familiar as possible with syntax. Um, there's another thing here that I would like to explain, and I'll explain it in, in, two, in a couple minutes. And then this thing, this B colon is just a label. This, this is not part of the code. I'm trying to select it. It's not part of the code. Even if I copy this entire line and paste it in another text editor, let me find a text editor here, and let me just bring this guy here. If I put this text editor, you're gonna see that this B colon is not there. That is just a label that IntelliJ is adding to try to tell you what's the name of that, uh, of that variable that it's being printed. So if I hold, uh, in, in a Mac is the command key, I think in, in a PC is the control key. On top of this, you, you can see that there's a cursor, a mouse. If I click on that, it'll take me to the definition of that. It'll open up a new tab here, and it's putting a new definition in, in I mean, it's looking at the definition of this. So you can see that Boolean B, that's why that B is there. It's telling me that the variable internally is named as B, just as a reference. Now, this class is just basically a wrapper object around Booleans. Right now, we're not gonna focus too much on this until next class, but maybe you guys, I, what I want you guys to understand is more or less like how to really operate IntelliJ and make sure that things are compiling because historically, if we move forward too much, you guys are not gonna, are gonna be very confused about all these little nuances. So I need you guys to 
put a little bit of practice time into IntelliJ. So we're gonna print the full truth tables in a class and then we're gonna do somebody to present. So these might feel like not too steep of a curve. I'm trying to make sure that, that you guys start with solid a solid understanding. This is this is great. So now we have our our, uh, our truth table printed um, correctly. So um, I would like to know uh, from your perspective, and I wouldn't be offended. This is this is more like an opinion rather than just from f for how much you are uh, actually feeling that you're uh, understanding so far. How much did today's class help you? And uh, I wouldn't be offended if there's, uh, uh, you know, lower numbers, because that probably indicates that you already had some previous experience. But if you guys are feel like you are uh, learning and stuff like that, then that's great. And yes, I'm hoping that, that we could, that we're gonna be trying to do more and more and more practice just to make sure that you guys get familiar with the syntax, with IntelliJ, that uh, the more experience, the more hands-on, the better it'll be with uh, with all of you. Um, so anyway, uh, if anybody needs again uh, any any one-on-one, -on -one, just message me. If not, then class dismissed, and I'll see you next Monday.